Hey guys, so I have an update on the SJM case. I know it's been long coming in terms of my sit down with SJM's father, but we also have in the news some developments in his case to still try to find some justice. If you're not familiar with the whole SJM case or Son Jung Min, that's what SJM stands for, it's in my playlist and it is essentially the mystery at the Han River. Why one night, two medical students, supposedly friends, went down to the Han River to just hang out, drink some drinks and have some snacks and just kind of chill. And by the next morning, only one came back alive. So we're going to go over the latest developments in how the father is seeking justice and also what he told me personally when I sat down with him a few months ago. Okay, this is the fastest summary I'll ever try to wrap up the SJM case, the Han River mystery. SJM, who's no longer with us, met up with his so-called friend Mr. A on April 24th, 2021. SJM got a text around 9 p.m.-ish asking if he wants to go out to the Han River for like a last-minute drinks thing by Mr. A. By around 10-ish, he's at the river since he lives nearby. They're hanging out and drinking. And at 1.47, we do have one of their last videos that, they, that was filmed of them. But by 2.18, we see a picture of SJM totally slumped over. 4.30 a.m., only Mr. A walks out of the park. But by 5.12 a.m., Mr. A is back at the park with his parents. They didn't tell SJM's parents yet. About half an hour after Mr. A's parents get to the park, SJM's parents are at the park looking for SJM. SJM continued to remain missing until five days later. On the 30th, SJM was found in the water. So, how did this medical student end up in the water and have it be ruled as an accidental drowning? And why does it seem like this is a cover-up for Mr. A? So as you'll see from my other videos, from the beginning, this was so sus on so many levels. And of course, yes, in the beginning, I was suspicious of everybody. So please forgive me of being suspicious of everybody. If you, if you know, you know. I'm sorry about that. But I'm suspicious of everybody. But because of following the case for this long, I am absolutely convinced that there is more to this and this more is kind of scary in the sense that the police is corrupted. We've already seen that again recently with the whole Lee Sun Yoon case. Now, I would like to actually take a moment to compare the two because Lee Sun Yoon was barely somebody under suspicion, and yet they brought him in three times for questioning. The last time that he was questioned was 19 hours long, and then the police said that he would be called in again for more questioning. Usually the last person, now let's bring it back to the SJM case, the last person seen with somebody who ends up on a live is the main suspect. At least, even if you're not gonna, you know, accuse that person, you're going to bring them in for questioning by the police. To this day, he has never had a sit-down questioning. His family keeps saying like, oh, we've responded to the request from the police to offer materials. But basically, that's like clothes or other pieces of evidence or written testimony that the lawyer can do. But he's never, ever, ever throughout all these years. It's been like three years almost. Never, ever been interrogated especially not on that level of even Lee Sun Yoon who was like basically like a kind of like many steps down in terms of like if it's a game of telephone to the actual 
investigation that was the main focus of the police. So if they're willing to investigate Lee Sun Gyun to that dramatic detail that really, really strained him to the point where we no longer have him, why is it here in 2024, looking back on this case, why is it not extremely odd that Mr. A was never really, really, really put through the ringer? If you watch the videos, you'll basically see why. Now, the update that we got, let's work backwards. It's not going to hold you in suspense. But essentially, in the past day, SJM's father said that he's going to appeal. He's going to keep fighting. What is he appealing? He's appealing a decision by the prosecution to say that they're going to acquit Mr. A of all charges. And that happened in January 17th. So almost two weeks ago. But 10 days later, SJM's family said, you know what? We're going to appeal this. So I guess there's an appeals process. Now, to say that this family has been jerked around by the justice system is an understatement. If we want to work backwards in terms of what has been declared officially by the police and the prosecution, Essentially, all of it has been Mr. A's not guilty or Mr. A, there's insufficient evidence to claim Mr. A would be guilty. So that's the thing. This whole game from the beginning, you can totally tell from the day, literally the day after when SJM's parents wanted to just meet up with Mr. A and his parents craziness craziness because right after that initial meeting that was at a cafe every other interaction a lawyer mr a brought a lawyer all right so essentially what if we're going just through the timeline if you're just like okay but just give me the actual official word and then there's the official word and then things that are keeping everybody up at night and also keeping sjm's father fighting so this whole incident happened in late April 2021. By the end of June 2021, the police said, ah, nothing to see here. We don't know uh, how SJM got into the water, but it's clear from the evidence that he accidentally drowned. And it seems as if he just walked into the water all by himself because he was drunk. And they let it go with that. However, by then, by then, SJM's father was like, Mr. A, his family, super sus. So then he launched his own police charges saying that at least Mr. A recklessly uh, abandoned um, SJM and attacked SJM that led to SJM's being unalive. And that went on back and forth in terms of like, where else can you appeal? So essentially in, in Korea, the police have to investigate the, the crime first. They gather the evidence and if they think, hey, this is totally sus, this guy or th these people, need, they need to go to prison then they hand it over to the prosecutors and then the prosecutors, you know, do the trial and they figure out like how much punishment somebody should get. But the police said like, there's nothing here to even send over to the prosecutors. So there is a system in Korea where you can appeal to the prosecutors directly and say like, look, the police say there's nothing here, but will you prosecutors please take a look? Now prosecutors can just be like, no, no, we don't wanna do that. Or they can be like, yes, we will do an independent investigation. During this time, though, there was a lot of uproar with the public. And they sensed that this was so unjust and there's something shady going on. So there were appeals to the Blue House. There were appeals to the National Assembly. There was like a lot of chatter about like how the National Assembly may or may not vote 
on creating their own special investigative committee didn't work out. Now, the prosecution essentially just sat on this case because remember they said, okay, we'll do an investigation, but they barely did any investigation, especially according to SJM's father. And then about 12 days ago, we hear that the prosecution saying like, well, there's not enough evidence. They said they faithfully conducted uh, an additional investigation by interviewing the accuser. So that's S. James' father, investigating witnesses and doing on site verification. But they said, oh, it's just difficult to really see that the facts of the crime would lead to some sort of uh, guilty conclusion. Now, notice how they didn't say that they actually went to interview. Uh, with the accused at all. So this is super sus. So apparently there is an appeal process still where Mr. Son can still use the system to try to get justice. So he said that he appealed. They have 30 days to appeal. So he filed an appeal and he says that he's not going to give up. He's going to continue, go all the way to the Supreme Court if he has to to uncover the unresolved suspicions. He also wrote on his blog to confirm this. Now, if you haven't read his blog, oh, he's good at this. Oh, he, yes, Mr. Song, it, yes, he's going through grief. But, and yes, I could see how he had been very much damaged by this. But you can also tell, oh, he got a streak. And so in his blog, He'll post, because if you're wondering, like, I, I can't find anything on his blog that talks about this case. I All I see is travel pictures, old travel pictures of him and his son. Yes. So that's what he does. He puts all the cool travel pictures. He might even talk about, like, you know, what, like, Van Gotha was doing or something, like, when he was visiting the palace or somewhere in Austria or, so, like, you know, whatever European vacation or, you know, he goes on, he went on a lot of vacations with his son. And so we get to see his son grow up in our eyes as well, through these travel pictures. And then at the very end, he writes, and not always that long. So he said that this time, he said, I appealed, as many people thought, and he wrote this on the 27th, and he appealed to the Seoul High Prosecutor's Office, and he said, I hope this time, the suspect will open his mouth and tell the truth. Right, so if you're looking at his blog, you're like, you know, like digging through a bag of French fries, you're like, where are the nuggets? Well down at the bottom, little four piece. Okay. So just go to the bottom if you're just ever going to go to his blog. But after thinking about it now, I'm really wondering what his strategy should be. Because obviously, formally, he has to go through the appeals process to keep it in play in the justice system. But obviously, the system has failed him repeatedly and has really helped Mr. A and his family. Of course, if you're on Mr. A's side, you're just saying like, well, of course it's helped Mr. A because he's innocent. Look at the other videos. But what I did notice and what I've seen in general, if you are, especially in Korea, but anywhere, if you're literally like the guilty one, if you're being accused, you have a much easier time, like on the defense actually, because you have a very clear objective. All this Mr. A had to do was create a situation where there's insufficient evidence. And we saw that fast forward three years now where the prosecution says there's insufficient evidence and then also reenact as much evidence as you can that suggests that it makes sense for the missing evidence to be in a different direction that makes you, the guilty one, innocent. So in this case, we saw from the very beginning, he threw away his shoes. He threw away his shirt the day after. And when they were actually asked to give the rest of his clothing for testing, they had already dry cleaned it and even included a pair of socks that he didn't even wear that day. And the police just accepted it. 
that's where it got creepy to me. I would understand if, you know, you're trying to pull all sorts of tricks out of the bag and you just, you know, you're just like, gotta save my son here. And then, you know, expecting the police be like, excuse me, you dry cleaned this evidence. Like, how are we supposed to test it? And then you think that we're going to accept it, but they just accepted it. We would be here forever if we went through all the different instances of where the police were acting super sus. But I don't think that helps SJM's father. Also, you can go to the other videos for all of that. Also, I think the argument that really makes people in Korea be convinced by SJM's father, despite this lack of evidence, is when he recounts the actions of Mr. A's father and mother when they come back. But that I don't think is convincing and it's definitely not evidence. So it's not convincing in law. So what is that? So let's let's see if this works, you know, with you cuz it's kind of 50-50 but for a lot of Korean people they're like, "Oh, he's kind of guilty." Based on what his parents did. So he went back home and not even like 30 minutes later, he's back with his parents and saying that like, oh, we went to go find him, find SJM because he was missing. Even though before then he's saying like, oh, well, my parents said like, oh, he probably went home. So ju you just come home too. So why would they go back to go find him? And have you ever lost anything, especially like in a park, in a big open area? like a dog, or even a person. If you're trying to find a person, or especially maybe if the person is asleep, you would walk around the entire park perimeter. You would, and then you would be what? Saying their name. You'd be like, Chungmin, Chungmin, Chungmin. We would, we saw none of that. The parents went straight to the riverbank where essentially all the unaliving uh, happened. And then they were like going around. Like you could see on the CCTV camera, they were like milling about. Essentially, people were saying like they were destroying evidence and making sure, you know, everything was tidy in that area for about 20 minutes. Then you didn't see them go around other places in the park being like, Changmin, where are you? Changmin, we're trying to find you. And then... Instead of calling SJM's parents right away after they were done at the river, that's when they contacted SJM's parents. And then SJM's parents came and were like, oh my God, what happened? Like, where's my son? And then the first interaction they had with Mr. A was like, wait a minute, that's my son's phone that you're holding. And Mr. A was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I must have switched phones. Yeah, Mr. A had SJM's phone. And then he's like, well, where's SJM's father is like, where's your phone? And he's like, I don't know where it went. SJM might have it. And then so at that time, you know, Mr. Son just heard about this and he's like, okay, well, maybe if you guys switched phones, then if I call your phone, he might have it and maybe we can find him. Now the phone kept ringing and ringing until 7 a.m. And then it was pinging. They followed the phone and it ended up going north of the river. Yeah, SJM did not take the phone mysteriously after he passed away on a trip across the bridge. What was Mr. A's phone doing over there? And then a few weeks later, it was found by supposedly a custodian on a grassy area of the park in a way far different part of it a few weeks later. There is no way for a phone to be sitting there for a few weeks. It's like dropping your phone in the mall in a busy area. Well, when people still went to malls, but like in a busy area where somebody would either steal it or notice it within an hour at the most, maybe 15 minutes at the most. A phone is not going to sit there for that long. Anyhow, I so said we're not going to go over into all the, the details again, but 
I think it's very important to see how perhaps there is another strategy that we need because the evidence is corrupted and you can't go back to a uh, corrupted evidence and you can't go back to police that were responsible in part for a lot of corrupting that evidence and trying to sell it to the public to suddenly turn around. Now, what I think we, we, we see SJM's father wanting essentially is just something simple, actually something heartfelt, a confession, uh, for Mr. A to say he's sorry to apologize and maybe face some punishment for what he did. But I don't think SJM's father is asking for really like huge things. However, to Mr. A, his family, trying to protect his career as a future doctor, this could, you know, knock him out of medical school, knock him out of the game. You're never, ever, ever, ever going to get an apology. And I don't think you're ever really going to get any justice from this justice system by asking for the corrupted evidence to be analyzed again. So in this situation, what would be the most strategic thing to do? Because I think if he's really going to go out there and fight, he better make it worth his while because this is a big sacrifice. This is a lot of continued heartbreak. And the odds are definitely stacked against him. Now, if you saw the other videos, you will notice from the get-go, the lawyers of Mr. A controlled the narrative of what happened that night down to the minute and they constructed it as if 100% of it was backed by some sort of evidence. Whereas a lot of it, in my opinion, was rewritten. And the most important parts that were rewritten were the ones that they glossed over. And where they wanted you to look more intensely was essentially when everything was over and there's really nothing to find. That made it really creepy to me because it felt like very orchestrated. So I think what SGM's father needs to do, option one, definitely needs to rewrite the timeline, especially between the hours of 2.15, I'll say, to 3.45, or let's just say what really went down. The most important time period, I think, is that one hour between 2.30 a.m. to 3.30 a.m. That is when I think most everything went down. That is the time period that actually the official police investigation really glosses over. And where I think out of all the things that Mr. A said he didn't remember because remember, he said that he was blacked out until like 7.30 when he went back into his car and went home. Like, he was blacked out, couldn't remember. But then he remembered key things that really helped construct this timeline. So I think SJM's father really needs to rewrite the timeline. They really need to focus on new evidence or evidence that was glossed over that helps construct this timeline. The biggest one is a real red flag of why the police were corrupt 331 there are two key moments 218 to me but 331 everyone can agree on is probably the most critical overlooked time period 331 that's when we see two figures jump over the riverbank down to the river that's when a lot of people think sjm went over to the riverbank and mr a followed and then just a few minutes later, only one person is seen climbing back up. Now, I've gone down there 
like where the grassy knoll, where they were walking. I've, I've gone through the whole entire perimeter and especially that area down there. And so 331 definitely needs to be reconstructed. And I think the critical missing factor, now looking back on this, one thing that I think was not pushed hard enough is the digital forensics of the cell phone records. I remember from another different True Prime podcast, however, how like uh, serial, I think, how important those cell phone records were. And the police were super sus with how they interpreted the phone records. And the phone records show digital usage at all the key timeline moments that I think are the true actual timeline. Now, police said that, oh, this data usage was just like apps updating itself. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. And that was only after they got caught in a different lie saying that like, oh, the phone was not even, SJM's phone was not even used after 1.09 a.m. But then SJM's dad was like, look, at 1.12 a.m., we know for sure he was using his phone to go pick up some delivery food. And they're like, oh, well, no, that was a different app. What we meant, like, it wasn't used, like, for like phone calls and texts like you know those apps are different like it was what well, it's like watching like somebody like a bad liar but then these are the police so i think they really need to go back to the digital forensics of the phone records and perhaps even the phone itself they do have sjm's old phone uh, probably after it's been through some things but who knows maybe you can get a really talented digital forensics person to dig up whatever like kind of ghost traces there are on that phone because at this point it's all about evidence if you're going to play the evidence game you better have evidence and you cannot rely on their old corrupted evidence third i would also i don't know if this is second or third but i would also push the interrogation line of mr a why was he not interrogated? What is his story? Why, 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 why? Not necessarily, I guess, to push Mr. A into the interrogation chamber because if he's been found not guilty and if basically that door has been closed, it really then puts the focus more on the police. A lot of this wouldn't have come to light, you guys, if there weren't other randos in the park just taking pictures of all sorts of things. Like, we got another key evidence at like 337 because some dude was just taking a picture of the moon that caught Mr. A in the frame. So anyway, 218. Now, this is my theory. I think he was basically gone at 218. At the very least, a coma. Because if we trust... The autopsy, which I only 50%, no, I don't trust it. But if you do trust the autopsy, it did say that the cause of death was drowning because there was water in the lungs. So that means that he breathed in water. If you do trust that, then at the very least, I think he was in a coma at 218 because looking at now other pictures of people who are unalive or, you know, not just drunk. That's the pose, the the limpness of the body when you are essentially near near death or unalive. And I think that's when the panic set in, and that's when we can also see the phone data usage go start to go crazy. And People are saying like the phone died of Mr. A Mr. A's phone died. So then that's why he was also using um, SJM's phone. So if I were to explore finding new evidence of this timeline that makes sense in my mind, essentially something happened to SJM. I think part of that evidence again is figuring out what the argument over Golden was really what I think it is, Mr. A, and a lot of you guys have mentioned this in the comments, that Mr. A 
may have spiked SJM's drink with something non-alcoholic, more like strong substances. And perhaps that's why he's just so passed out at 218. Because there's no other photos. That's the thing. There's no other photo evidence, though. That's when the photo evidence ends. And then we have conjecture from questionable eyewitnesses. But the photo evidence ends around then of SJM. The last video was about half an hour before then when Mr. A was on his knees bowing. That's kind of like the Korean gesture of like, oh, I did a lot wrong if you want to be a little bit more comical about it. But that is essentially the extremist way of saying of saying I'm sorry. And he's saying like, I'm sorry for for what I did. And they were saying that what he did was golden, which is some term for something. And people have been trying to pick apart that for years. Like, what does he mean? And I think the ones that they posited in the mainstream media don't really make sense. It's not the name of a rapper. And it doesn't mean like you're cheating or you just kind of failed an exam. So you're getting the gold medal by like, you know, leaving the exam room first. Those are the two most popular ones. The third one is just like they got an award, like, um, for a video game like you get the gold level or something like that it doesn't make sense it also doesn't make sense grammatically no matter how much of a lingo it is it doesn't make sense grammatically that's what all korean like you know analysts are saying so i think really you guys have also mentioned this in my in the comments of the videos that golden could be a reference to when you are uh under the influence so perhaps SJM found out that his drink was spiked and then he got mad and he's recording this uh, apology from Mr. A. Or it could relate to a previous incident and this is now one tier a little bit more of a speculation, but it, it, it does also... Uh, somebody has also said that perhaps... SJM had like video evidence of Mr. A doing something inappropriate to the uh, specimens in their bio lab at school, you know, like dissection, even of like, you know, actual, um, well, just look it up. And the Burning Sun incident did show us that... The people, like when the, the celebrities that went to jail recorded their essays on women, they recorded it on a phone that they called the golden phone. So perhaps it could be something like that where Mr. A wanted to either go through SJ's SJM's phone and try to find those videos and delete it because it looked like at the 218 picture, Mr. A was definitely busy on his phone, his phone or SJM's phone doing something. And it could very well have been going through the album to start deleting stuff, or it could be panicking about SJM's condition and asking his parents or people around him for help. Whatever the case may be, that 218 to like 331 was not a low-key situation. Now, here is the debate I think I would have with some people about 331. 331, it's either, there's definitely, un, in, it's not debatable if you believe the video footage that two bodies went over the river. But the question in my mind is, Definitely Mr. A, of course, because he came back up, was alive. Question was, it was SJM thrown over in a limpless state or did he wake up and get into a physical altercation and then get pushed and fall? There are some people that say like, if you kind of look at the movement of the CCTV, that it does look like perhaps there are two people moving around they could be fighting 
What I saw was more of like, almost like a sack of potatoes being thrown over. That's uh, and the other reason why I think it's important to follow the 218, whether there was something in SJM's drink. The autopsy, though, if you believe the autopsy, you'd be like, well, Sean, what about the autopsy? Did it show? I mean, if it was substances, shouldn't it show substances? Well, they focused on the alcohol. And then in terms of other substances, they said not a significant amount found. So they didn't say nothing was found, but they said no nothing of a significance. So you can totally take them at their word on that. I don't. Because they actually lied, flat out lied about actual data and evidence. So misdirecting in a little part of a report uh, would not surprise me. Okay, so let's go into what SJM's father told me when we sat down one-on-one, -on -one, it was last early summer, late spring. And I really wanted to see if he was still in it to fight or whether he was still in it because this had just become such a national dialogue and case for change and other people were really caring about it and especially from what we saw this week and from what i saw then yes i saw that he still wanted to fight i wanted to see whether he was just like had, you know had kumbaya out and you know was just helping the cause or whether there was something there and in what direction like against whom because in this case it's very it could be very, very obvious and i do think it is in this situation he is really targeting mr a and he wants like he wants the justice to come out of mr a other people could be like oh well mr a mr a but wow i'm shocked at the police like you know i'd rather have the police apologize and you know i guess i can understand mr you know I just wanted to see where it was. It seemed like he really wants Mr. A to take accountability and he is willing to fight. Though he is still very calm, uh, very classy. But yes, after talking to him, there was a fire. But the thing that I noticed is that he was very careful about what he was saying in, in the sense of he's heard everything. He's seen like everything that people are, are saying about the case, but he's sticking only to the evidence. And I guess that is a very respectable thing to do. But I think uh, like if I wasn't him, <laughs> like if, um, what I'm saying is that like, and from, from the beginning, he's always followed and trusted the police until he didn't trust them. But then even when he didn't trust them, he was going based on what was proven as evidence. And I think that's where his weakness is. And that's where he's kind of losing is that like, how are you supposed to win when all you're going to do is uh, depend on the tools of your enemy? And so on the other hand, nobody can accuse him of saying crazy things. But he did ask, and if there is some sort of conjecture, he puts it in the form of a question. So he said, why did the police not investigate 331? He said, it's confirmed that there were two bodies that went down at different speeds. There were no other people before then, according to the evidence, only one person uh, came back up. And he's always saying stuff like this, like only he knows, but he says he can't remember. Because he's always saying, like, there's only one guy who knows what happened on the river that night. And then he, you know, leaves it, leaves it open. And he said that he trusted the accused and the police way too much during the first hours and even the entire month of the investigation, which I guess, you know, if you're going to trust your country and trust your institutions and trust other people in your community, it's not crazy but he totally got hosed for it. 
and essentially, you know, lost that golden time. He said the evidence was distorted, destroyed, and abandoned and reconstituted to uh, create innocence in the accused. And again, it's a very odd the reason why it really made me feel uncomfortable was like, you saw the actions of the police not trying to find what happened to SJM. He said their actions were not to find out what happened to SJM. It was to create innocence in the accused, even as the accused was never officially declared a suspect. Why would the police spend all their time and effort trying to prove the innocent of somebody who's not even named as a suspect? So shady. Then there is 3.37 a.m. The photo that I say is like sent from heaven. It's the shot of the moon that captured Mr. A talking on the phone. And SJM's father brings this up because it confirms that Mr. A was alone when calling his parents. SJM was nowhere to be found. He had his backpack on. Like everything was packed up. There was no like picnic, you know, mat or anything. And yet he hid this phone call from the records. If it weren't from this random photo, if it weren't for this random photo, then we wouldn't even know that he was calling. And then we wouldn't even have had a response back from Mr. A saying like, oh yeah, I guess we were, uh, yeah, I was calling. Because at this time, at 3.37 a.m., in his testimony, his written testimony, Mr. A claimed that this is when he saw SJM as unresponsive and couldn't wake up. But SJM is nowhere there. So where is this SJM that he can't find? And then he said, oh, and then I was supposed to go back home, but then I fell asleep. And then I woke up like at 4.20 a.m. And then somebody woke me up and said, hey, get off of the riverbank. Apparently he fell asleep on the riverbank, which I think is very hard to do because it's just rocks and water and it's cold and muddy and nasty and reeds sticking up everywhere. He was not sleeping there. But he's saying like, oh, I fell asleep there and then I walked home. So what I think happened was that the accused lied to give himself an alibi for 218 to 337 a.m. I think that's when most of this criminality happened. And instead of the, you know, phone call of like, oh, you know, like, I can't, you know, I, I, I can't get SJM to wake up at 337 a.m. I think that actually happened at 218 a.m. where we have the pictures. We have the pictures of Mr. A frantically on his phone over a sham that is not waking up. And I think that's when he actually had that conversation. And in this kind of, you know, these cases, you, the way to lie is to tell the truth, but of a different thing. So back to what SJM's father told me, he said that the accused and his parents only went to the 331 AM spot, you know, like over the river. When they claimed that they were looking for SJM, again, he finds that the most sus. And this was even before they called SJM's parents. And kind of asked a little bit about like, okay, so what are all these stories about like, you know, the dynamic between SJM and Mr. A? And SJM's father says that Mr. A had like a jealous streak, behavioral problems, and that Mr. A's girlfriend may have had some talks or relations or something interaction with Chungmin, SJM, so that Mr. A could have been very jealous of SJM. And he said that Mr. A had money problems as well. Yes, maybe his parents are rich or maybe his parents are rich, but still money problems, something. But he said that Mr. A was obsessed with brands and image, like he always needed to feel special, but he found himself struggling in med school, probably because he was sort of like a Nepo baby, but he was struggling in med school. You see SJM, you know, very popular, very kind, very just earnest, very hardworking and, you know, accomplishing based on his merits. And what I've noticed in Korea, 
a lot of the the privileged kids they're really instead of feeling grateful that they didn't have to work as hard to be there as the one like as the kids that are busting their butts they actually hate the people who are busting their butts because it makes them feel less than so sjm's father said that you know he there's no way for him to prove the conjecture so he's sticking to the facts but again these facts are outlined by the corrupt police but he says he has to stick to the facts that's where i think he's gonna if that's where i think he's going uh, wrong here he believes though that sjm was awake at 3 31 a.m and that a pushed him over so he believes that sjm did wake up or was there like interacting and that's why we really needed to have that additional cctv footage that was mysteriously denied and erased by the police department that was closer to where they were that could have just showed us the whole thing there are probably people in korea that have seen the whole video so they know the whole thing so as James Dale is saying, like, you know, this is this was like a small crime, you know, perhaps an accident that turned into a nightmare. Mr. A tried to get out of ruining a spotless record so he wouldn't be disqualified as a doctor. But now, you know, Mr. A has a bigger shadow. But Mr. A continues on in medical school. But apparently, you know, as James dad threw some shade, he said, like, oh, he failed the second year. He has to repeat the year. But you know, saying like, well, he gets to continue on to medical school. His father continues to operate his clinic. So, Ashram's dad feels like, you know, these people here didn't take responsibility. And I don't think he's really has kind of a beef with the whole institution, but he does, institution of Korea, but he does feel that the system does need reform but instead of you know really thinking like oh this whole system is 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 is, is you know messed up he really wants mr a and his family to take accountability but in order to do that i think he's going to have to blend a little bit some of these objectives i mean he could go the route of just being a martyr and saying like forgive and forget and then sort of just create a bit of a symbolism for himself as somebody who has had to go through some sort of real hardship and unfairness and then perhaps that can build awareness but if he's really going to try to fight within a system that has been rigged against him i think he needs to take a look at the rigging and i think he needs to dig up some of this d digital forensics find out really i think the best thing would be to find out what that fight about was with golden because that starts to show a little like motive this has to put like put the flesh on the story what was that argument about because that i think is critical to what happened because it literally was like dominoes after that event 147 then 218 he slumped over 331 he the two people are over the, the riverbank. One person comes up. 424, he walks out. And then 512 a.m., he's back with his parents. Like, you know, they look like they're, you know, cleaning up, not looking for a lost kid. So if he doesn't want, you know, go after any kind of like, you know, like his own PI detective of following co-conspirators and, you know, like challenging the system i'd say like just you know stick to that new evidence rewrite the timeline according to the truth and then go from there and then see where that takes you i hope i hope the best for him and if i do get into contact with him i will update you on what he said but he has said that he is you know publicly going to continue to fight until he can't fight any longer and the people of Korea who have come out for continued protests and demonstrations and rallies and refreshing his memorial on the river also seem to agree that there's something wrong, really wrong that happened here that needs to be addressed still. All right, guys. Well, what do you think? Put your comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you again next time.
Bye-bye.